We have to really remember that, you know, we are here because there are huge issues in our society. There are huge problems here. We have massive inequality in terms of wealth, in terms of access to things like healthcare and education, and even access to basic food, you know, basic food requirements. We are here to initiate a conversation. I think when we look at it, what we're seeing is a human immune response, really the uh, humanity has kind of a collective cancer and that can be seen in the economy that we're using which is based on cyclical consumption, a constant consumption meaning money has to constantly be turned over regardless of human necessity and so products also constantly have to be turned out regardless of human necessity or um, environmental destruction as well so it's a human immune response because we are in a very dangerous uh, unsustainable system right now. Keep our power! We got the power! We got the power! What kind of power? Keep our power! <laughs> well, I think this is day 35 of our occupation here in Altair Square. This is our five week anniversary. Um, so I've been here since day one and we're still going really strong. We're still staying here. We're still standing up and fighting against the inequalities of our society. There's Occupy uh, Wellington, Dunedin, Christchurch, in uh, all the main city centres this is happening. And it's also happening now in uh, 2,355 cities and towns on the planet. People are coming and just giving of themselves and not expecting anything in return, but at the same time being given food, being given shelter, and it's just great to be able to see this actually happening in cities now, and it's bringing it to a different audience people that uh, may never have known about this and they're hearing about stuff on Facebook or the internet and they come down to see that this is actually going on. Retrain. You are getting screwed over by the system, did you know that? Um, how, how are we I'm getting like screwed over by the system? Um, so there's, there's the 1% of the people at the top with all the money, well the majority of the money, who are using the so-called democracy system and abusing their power with their money to get bills passed which impact negatively on people in lower socioeconomic areas and minority groups. There's a lot of stuff that we know about, for example the 200,000 hungry children or children living in poverty. Um, we have a lot of older people that are starving to death in their homes that most people don't know about. I have friends that work with them and they're too proud to tell people they can't buy food. Here in Auckland? Uh, Auckland and Wellington, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I assume you know, other major parts of the country and, and also in the, in the suburbs and rural too. I think so money is, if you've got enough of it, you can buy laws, you can buy politicians, you can buy police, you can buy military, you can buy entire countries and enslave them to debt if you've got enough money. It's completely detached from human well-being and envirom the environmental destruction that it's causing. What are you making? It's a beehive, it's a piñata. Um, it's full of lollies so that we can smash the state. <laughs> if we come along and um, smash the state, we can reappropriate what's ours. You know, but there's a whole level of, of knowledge that people are not made aware of because of the failure of our mainstream media within our democracy. You can live in a different kind of system than we currently see. Um, I think that there's a lot of a concept that there's only one way to live and that's the way we have and there isn't another way and that's because everything else is squashed by the media in reality there's all kinds of other things that are going on that people don't know about occupation is just one way of bringing it into the public Look, the reason I'm here is I'm concerned about the state of our planet what's the point in making money today for your kids if you don't have a planet for them tomorrow I believe that our planet's more important than money and at the moment I believe we're selling out our environment 
out of that concern? Um, at the moment, I feel like um, I personally am and governed by a system that I never consented to um, and would not have and do not. Is that why? I'm here because I've spent you know, almost five years as an activist in campaigning um, for better outcomes from a healthcare system and I'm sad to say I haven't really gotten anywhere. So my main interest here is working together with a whole bunch of people to find a system that can work better for all of us, something that we can all agree upon where everyone has an equal say regardless of how much wealth they've got and everyone gets their fair share in life. We've got the power! We've got the power! What kind of power? People, People power. power! We're making a stand, it's a beginning, it's a very big problem that we're having to face. But someone's got to stand up and say that we aren't happy and let's try and put some minds together and find a solution. So this is only the very beginning, but it's obviously that we're in so many countries, it must be striking a chord with a lot of people. You know, we don't have all the answers and we don't even have all the questions yet, but we are saying to the general public, hey, let's stop, let's think about where we are going as a society, how we can improve, how we can reduce some of these inequalities, and how we can move forward. How long do you keep speaking and remaining unheard before you need to um, get yourself a tent and pitch it in the town square to make the point? So there's a few people on security, there's someone on, on medical, there's someone yeah. on um, mm. kitchen, there's yeah. someone on what, meeting and greeting people or? Yeah, yeah. that's we have a welcome tent, I've been doing that for the last welcome uh, hour. Welcome tent? And, yes. so, and that happens all night as well? Uh, yes, I mean not so many people come through into the camp the later at night but it's all during the day and through the evening and everything, someone okay. will always be there too. And you've got a tent for medical, a tent yep. for medical media? Tent over there. Media tent over there, workshop here, workshop, um, a building, and crafts, yep. uh, just a lounge, tent. smokers tent, <laughs> <laughs> welcome tent, kitchen. Wow. What are you making? I'm just making a little towel to for a security entrance, so the guys have somewhere to shelter and stand up. Have you got resource management consent, sir? <laughs> Nice. And so, is there a meeting, a regular meeting every day? Yeah, that you. It's called a general assembly, and basically, uh, we use direct democracy to speak about the issues in the camp, or you know, basically or whatever needs to be addressed okay. to the general population. Yep, does that go for like an hour? How long does that go for? Yeah, usually about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. Sometimes they drag on a bit. Is there like a talking stick or an adjudicator? How do you? Oh, okay. So we have facilitators. A facilitator. Mm -hmm. This is the kitchen at uh, Occupy Auckland, and essentially how it works is it run like a communal kitchen. So anybody can come in and help share the food workload. They can do some of the cooking, or they can do some of the cleaning, or do some of the preparation. And essentially, if you're preparing a meal for somebody, you prepare it for everybody. And that way, everybody gets a good share of the meal, and people are working together and sharing together. So do do you do what level? Do your, your spoon level, but give them some veggies, eh? Exactly. Yeah, the whole the whole place is fun, and it's uh, it's it's nice to be able to have, share meals with everybody and not come here and have to go off and go buy your food at the Burger King down the way or whatever it is. You can come here and share meals with everyone and not be expected to have to pay anything for it. And it's a really great way of showing that you don't have to be living in the standard typical paradigm. And in that way it's, it's turning everything on its head because it's a really weird concept to show up here and not have to be expected to pay something to get a meal. You just get a really great meal that people have cooked and they're just giving it to you. Just giving to, for the sake of giving. Um, it's a gift-based economy and trade-based economy. And it's really, it's a revolution. I've been here for three weeks now. Three weeks I've been doing this. And yeah, like they say, I'm one of the main cooks here. Yeah. And um, 
So what does a normal day look like for you? Um, food, food and more food. <laughs> So yeah, no, it's all about preparation, prepping the food and getting it on, and that's what we basically do all day, um, and clean <laughs> clean our kitchen, and that's the main thing. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It might actually surprise some people, but it's like having a full-time job, you know? You're in an office, you're doing the same things that you would do in an office with every other people. You're working with work colleagues, you're having meetings with with people within this, this movement and with other agencies around Auckland. We're meeting people on site, we're welcoming, welcoming them in, we are scheduling appointments, we are taking care of donations, we're ensuring that we have equipment and materials we need for our protest actions. I do security late at night actually, it's, um, I'm in favour of the, the later hours, um, so that means that Depending on when the shift starts, I'll start at 10 or I'll start at midnight and I'll go do a three or four hour shift. I also am part of the kitchen crew. Yeah, most nights you can find me in the kitchen from 4, 4.30, preparing um, vast quantities of tasty and nutritious vegan salads for anywhere from 100 to 200 people. I'm media liaison, so if media shows up and people don't feel like talking to them, they can point at me and say, go talk to her. I deal with about between 300 and 500 emails a day, which we get from members of the wider public and from groups around New Zealand and worldwide. Um, we're in constant liaison with other occupations around the world. We have a nightly Skype session with all the occupations in New Zealand, so we're kept up to date with what's happening in their places and what's happening in our occupation. Why am I here? Bro. Pretty much all sorts of reasons, but I was chilling in Hamilton and my mate turned up. He was like, get in the car, we're going to Auckland. And uh, I came for the first three days, went home for three days, came back on Friday and I've been here since because it's one of the few places I've ever been happy. Yeah, that's pretty much it, bro. Now only an expert can deal with the problem. Because half the problem is seeing the problem. And only an expert can deal with the problem. Only an expert can deal with the problem. So if there's no expert dealing with the problem, it's really actually twice the problem. Because only an expert can deal with the problem. Only an expert can deal with the problem. We all have to believe in each other. And for us as being native, it is called principles of matter. There's nothing that we need to explain to anybody about. For as it says, he tangata, he tangata. People, people, people. Like today, we had whangai hundreds and hundreds of people on the spur of the moment. So to me, that's what needs to be done around this whole country. And open the door. The door is shut on us. But let, we've got to learn to open it all together. Not from us. We can't just go around blaming everybody anymore because 170 years later on, some of those people that we warn about are my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. So uh, government can't change if, if the hearts of the people don't change. And so my message is that uh, uh, seek that inner peace within inside you and then all things can happen. Some of my favourite things about Occupy Auckland have been that we've been using a consensus-based decision-making model, um, something that I'm already familiar with, but it's, it's really wonderful to see it actually working on a larger scale. Um, to me, I guess it's, it's living proof that my, my political ideals um, can be a reality. Um, I'm also really happy to see people who otherwise might not have been exposed to radical ideas being exposed to them and becoming radicalised themselves and um, becoming really enthusiastic about spreading alternative ideas about the way the world could be. Um, like people uh, promoting the ideas of using consensus, like um, reclaiming public space um, and I think in, in doing these things people are finding um, that they can feel freer and and actually become happier. Um, I've seen a lot of really happy people here.
um, because we're a little community. If we apply it with um, human and environmental concern, we can actually use technology to free people from mundane, repetitive jobs and have time to actually um, look after each other and bring up our kids and do the things that um, really contribute to society rather than a lot of the jobs today which are really contributing nothing to society. They're, a lot of them are actually taking um, and pol polluting our entire biosphere. It's a case of working together. For instance, we have cities full of buildings and full of factories and full of companies that are competing for market share. If we actually take that unnecessary competitive component out, then we um, see that we don't need half of the technology that we're using and half of the um, half of all the stuff that surrounds us that isn't actually producing um, anything for the well-being of humanity. So we can actually cut back a lot of all this trash that surrounds us and literally rebuild our cities to be big parks. And it's how real success is. It's caring about others. At the bottom line, we all want to feel cared for. Yeah, and we have to. It's just a need. It's our own needs of a human because mm. we are one collective, united. It's just we're one big whole of people. As an individual, we can make this movement powerful and create a society that actually will lift up the standard of living of everyone. So just come here and share it and, you know, put that passion on it because everybody that is here is very passionate. Uh, it's a process of educating ourselves and each other and being here and part of these occupations is an incredible experience, an incredible learning experience how to communicate and how to arrive at decisions. It'll take the, these movements to literally come up with a new social proposal to pre present to the wider public for them to actually see merit in it, to see that um, uh, if we apply ourselves we can do far more and we can literally create a high standard of living. I always hoped that I would see a social revolution within my lifetime and I don't know if that's going to happen but I see this as a major step forward towards that end, um, although obviously it's not the end, it's the beginning. The occupation of Altea Square lasted for 105 days. The camp was forcibly broken up on the 23rd of January at 7am by police in hired trucks confiscating all equipment. The remaining protesters were removed three days later on the 26th of January where 25 people were arrested and detained for more than six hours and denied basic rights like food, water and the right to call a lawyer. The grounds of eviction were violation of council bylaws around camping in a public space. A major argument against the occupiers in Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch was that the grass was being destroyed. It has since grown back fine. The occupiers maintain that their civil right to protest, assemble and speak should override any council bylaws. The court process continues and has had many stages. The original authorization to remove the protesters in December was overruled by a different judge stating that the original injunction did not specify who the campers were. In response, using arrest information provided by police, the council put together eight names of people to represent the movement. In a subsequent hearing with the original judge, those eight people were charged with both civil and criminal offences, including contempt of court and willful trespass. Some of those eight named had never even camped at Altea Square and were simply present on the grass at the time of the arrests. These charges carry a maximum penalty of three months in prison and a fine of $1,000. The council is also seeking to recoup costs of up to $300,000 for council legal fees, security guards and damage to the grass. The camp may be gone, but the movement is far from over. Concerned citizens continue to hold up to three public meetings a week in Aotea Square and all are busy and active around Auckland and New Zealand on various campaigns. If you'd like to know more or become involved with the Occupy movement, then go to the Occupy Auckland page on Facebook and ask on the wall for the latest updates.
is a problem And seeing the problem is half the problem Because only an expert can deal with the problem Only an expert can deal with the problem